If you've ever had this feeling that something was terribly wrong with the world that we live in, but you couldn't figure out just what it was, then you've come to the right place. Secret societies, mystery religions, and the Illuminati have been controlling our reality since the beginning of time. But not anymore, because there is an awakening happening, and you are about to become a part of it. Wake up, because this is a call for an uprising. This is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's show. As most of you know, I try to cover the repetition and the pattern that we're seeing in the mainstream narrative and things going on around the world, around the country here in America. One of the stories that kind of has been brushed over because there is so much going on is that there was a quote unquote tropical storm, not even a hurricane, which of course they tried to create a hurricane and it turned into a tropical storm that hit the East Coast with Pretty minimal winds, about 20 mile per hour winds, even though they said it was going to be 70 mile per hour winds. I know this because I've spoken to people in states like New Jersey where I have family, in states like New York where I know people, in some of the southern states, and it was very minimal. And what was happening where there was a lot of tornadoes popping up apparently in places they've never popped up before, which is of course a part of HARP, a part of weather modification. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes if you haven't seen a video, that, a, a clip that you need to see. And be aware of because the CIA, I mean, <clears throat> Disney, even in the 50s, was talking about having the ability to control weather. It's now the 20s, the 2020s. So we're talking, uh, what is that, 60 years? It was 1959, I believe it came out. Of course, I've shown you the clips of the president, JFK talking about it. Many others talking about having the ability to control weather. But one of the things we're seeing is massive power outages going on that don't seem to make a lot of sense. So the entire state of New Jersey, for the most part, millions of people have been out of power for days in New Jersey. People who didn't even report getting much of a storm other than just a little bit of rain. North Carolina, South Carolina, Delaware, getting record-breaking tornadoes. And then, which was really suspicious about all of it, is after this whole thing passed, millions of people without power, a story came out about how New York then was out of power. Two million people in New York were out of power uh, and they were extremely angry and they claimed it was because lightning hit, struck somewhere in New York and there was another one of these massive blackouts. Last summer there was a massive blackout and here's where the repetition comes in. And they tested this and they did this blackout and I talked about this because it's important to know. Plum Island, which I've talked about many millions of times on this channel, which I know you all are familiar with, Palm Island is now being used by DARPA. And they're using the island not for disease control and putting diseases in animals. They're using it to test out taking down power grids and doing cyber attack drills. And it's very strange that the majority of the East Coast is now experiencing this mass power outage that isn't lasting 24 hours, 12 hours, 5 hours. It's lasting up to a week from a storm that was a tropical storm where there was very minimal damage. And look, I'm not saying that there wasn't damage. I'm not saying, oh, well, look, there's down power lines. Of course, and that's going to happen. But the amount of damage that occurred, as far as power outages go, was bigger than Sandy Hook in New Jersey, which is like the biggest hurricane that the state has ever seen. And people said the damage was way more minimal, but the consequences is way higher because people aren't going to have power for up to a week. And I believe they're running some type of a test here. Now, again, the storms are real. I'm not saying there weren't any storms because they use weather modification. These hurricanes that always pop up, yes, there's real ones. Yes, there's ones God creates, but they manipulate weather. They have the ability to manipulate weather. That is what HARP is, if you're not familiar with HARP up in Alaska. That is what they're using CERN for with earthquakes and other things. And that is what is going on around the country. Now, tie this all in with these massive stories that are coming out, starting in Los Angeles with how they're going to be taking people's power and shutting it off. If, there's, if they have any belief that there's a party going on at somebody's apartment, somebody's home, shutting off water, which, of course... If you, have, if you have power, obviously the water goes out. If you have sept, I mean, if you have water well and all that stuff, you lose your water. So people are without water, they're without power. And it reeks of some type of massive test going on by DARPA because it's all happening at the same exact time. None of these types of things happen at the same time. All these months that we've had this stuff going on with the fake outbreak, 
There hasn't been one time where they've, they've threatened to shut people's power off. Now, all at once, we have the East Coast completely wiped out. Manhattan, when the storm had already passed, the storm was gone, keep in mind. Days later, the sun was out. And now people in Queens and Manhattan and New York are without power for days and days and days for no reason. And they cited a lightning bolt struck. That was what they cited. No storm went through. The storm was already gone. And people that hadn't lost power. Then they lose power two days later. There is some type of test being run here. And I want to show you this weather modification video because I, used, I show it usually every year. It never gets old. You should always watch it because you used to say, why would Disney even be playing this and tied into this? Because Disney is a CIA operation. It's a front. And we know a lot of the, the fronts that it's used for, including MK Ultra Mind Control, but many other things. They have the ability to control the weather. They openly have admitted it. And they, people call us crazy when we talk about weather modification. And it's like I've said a million times, the reason they say that is because they can't wrap their heads around the fact that human beings would do this to other human beings. If they could, then they would say, okay, they do have the technology. Well, of course they have the technology. What do you think HARP is? What do you think they're doing over on Plum Island with these power outage drills? Right? All, how many times have we seen drills before the big event? From what happened in that event in 2001 in September in New York to what happened in Boston during that marathon. There's always these trials and tests and, you know, they occur beforehand, right? These fit, oh, we're doing a test run, a test drill, just like they're doing with DARPA, just like they did last summer, just like they're doing now. They're preparing for something with a power outage. I can almost guarantee it. And I'm not saying the whole nation is going to be without power. But there's definitely massive testing going on because a tropical storm that isn't even a grade one hurricane would not knock out the entire state of New York, the majority of, of excuse me, the majority of New York, the entire state of New Jersey, Delaware, North Carolina. You could look all these places up yourself and see how far down it goes where all these people are without power. And then they just show a stock photo or, you know, oh, there's a power cord down. People I talk to, uh, there's some branches in my yard. That's about it. Do you see power things? No. Is there a reason the whole state would be down? No. Was it like this with Sandy? No. People in New York, uh, the storm's already passed. Why is the power out? So what I think is, you know, they tried to create one of these, uh, uh, you know, massive hurricanes as they always do. They hit Florida up and then they try to go up the East Coast as best they can. And it dissipated and it didn't go the way they planned. It ended up being a weak storm. And they still just were like, you know what? We're going to shut the grid down. Because that's a whole, the whole point of us doing this was to shut the grid down, to see how people react. It doesn't take seven days to get the power back up and running with these massive electric companies and power companies that are worth billions and billions of dollars. And then you have the West Coast, which is talking about just taking your power and shutting it off because of the spread of the outbreak. And that's spreading to other states as well. So take a look at Disney talking about weather manipulation and tell me that it's crazy to think that they use these things and do these things so that they could run these test operations like cutting people's power. To ask a question, a couple of questions here about HARP, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. Uh, several of you at the table have a little bit of a piece here. As you know, this is located up in Alaska. It's currently funded by the Air Force Research Lab. It was formerly funded by the Office of Naval Research. One of the prime customers is DARPA. Uh, which is currently running experiments at the facilities here. Then uh, to, to uh, Dr. Walker and, and Mr. Schaefer then, it, Dr. Walker, your agency is currently running the facility. Um, uh, I've mentioned that it's our understanding through the president of UAF uh, that, that the plans are to move forward and, and demolish the facility this summer. So the question to you is, is that accurate? Can you explain why? And then uh, perhaps to both you and Mr. Schaefer, is there any benefit in exploring a potential relationship with the University uh, of Alaska to, to perhaps take over the heart? Yeah, thank you, Senator. The Air Force has uh, gotten great value out of HARP in the past. We, uh, we, we took over from the Navy and managed it and actually did a number of uh, experiment campaigns up there and uh, have finished our, our work that we're interested in doing up there. We've uh, moving on to other ways of uh, managing the ionosphere, which the HARP was really designed to do, was to 
inject energy into the ionosphere, be able to actually control it. And, uh, but that work is, has been completed. Mr. Yes. Fletcher, another question on, on the, uh, in an interview with the Los Angeles Times on April 21st, you said that the, you told the Associated Press uh, that the American government has created weather tampering techniques so that the New World Order will be able to starve millions of Americans and to control the rest. Would you explain what you were trying to say? Well, it, it, what I was trying to say is exactly what I said. There is weather control techniques. We have a complete package on that, which I did not bring, but I certainly will see to it that it is brought in for the record. Number one, the entire patents on the equipment. Number two, Senator Claiborne Pell's complete statement and story of his own that not only does it exist, but that we even utilize it as far back as the Vietnam War. You might want to touch base That's with right, Senator but I, Pell. I, I just want to repeat Speaking. before so, I turn to So question. yes, yeah, so but we do have that all that information. The, you're saying the government has created weather tampering techniques so that the, quote, new world order will be able to starve millions of Americans. Worldwide. The, millions of Americans and to control the rest. Yes, sir, and that's my belief. As bizarre as that sounds, when if somebody had told me that that equipment even existed 10 years ago, I would have thought they were nuts, sir. And at this point in time, we have all the documents to prove it. And if you think that 85 tornadoes takes place in the middle of our growing area by simultaneous accident, I'm, I'm sorry. With the equipment that's already set up internationally, and as bizarre as that is, it is proven and documented. We will supply you with those documents. As bizarre as that is, I would say that weather wars, and this is uh, quoting actually Senator Claiborne Pell himself, that they are the greatest weapon ever created in the world, and that's the Senator's own statement. So yes, I do stand on that. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Thank you. These artificial clouds will block the sun from evaporating more water to feed the hurricane. The reports coming into the control center indicate that the diversionary cloud seeding over Kansas is now creating a flood danger. Specially equipped robot aircraft are dispatched immediately to release a high concentration of cloud seeding material into the fringes of the storm. Heavier seeding from the ground also helps to subdue the rain by spreading it over a wider area. The controller calls for another view of the hurricane, which has now moved closer to the coast. Signal out on number one satellite. Ten minute interruption for correction. Have you anything else in the area? Satellite station S1 is approaching area. We'll make contact. S1, S1, this is Weather Central. Request video signal at grid coordinates, COCO. An emergency situation has developed. In an orbiting space station a thousand miles above the hurricane, a crewman sends a temporary picture back to Weather Central. Okay, S1, your video is R5S5, thank you. The hurricane has stopped moving toward the coast, but is still intensifying. It must be made to move northward and out to sea. This is a crisis. Aberdeen Station, activate multiple seeding rockets on course 117. The controller decides to fire cloud seeding rockets just ahead of the hurricane, hoping to start it moving. the hurricane begins to shift. All available forces have been brought into play. Now we can only watch and wait.
After hours of tension, the turning point is reached. Latest reports indicate the control strategy is successful. At last, the high pressure ridge has settled along the coast, forming an invisible wall of safety. The storm is over. The danger has passed. The hurricane has been defeated, turned away from the land, and left to spend itself harmlessly far out at sea. In the world of tomorrow, weather control will enrich and safeguard our daily lives. In the foreseeable future, we will conquer more than violent storms. We will turn the destructive elements of today into new sources of power, shaping the land on which we live. All mankind will benefit. Arid wastelands will be made green and fertile. And vast frozen areas will become productive. To this end, man-made satellites will probe the secrets of the skies. They will be our eyes in outer space. Weather modification programs, experimental ones done by private companies, done by the United States government, uh, done by states across the United States are underway. There's more than 50 of them in operation across the United States. All of these impact agriculture because they change the microclimates needed for agriculture to survive. None of these programs that I know of today, and this is all public record, are available at any time uh, with oversight, agricultural oversight or public oversight. These programs impact agriculture, and there are programs around the world, international corporations are modifying our weather all the time, and they're modifying it in ways that cover thousands and thousands of square miles. Most of it is chemically altered. So that what happens is that we are putting chemicals, ground-based chemicals that are shot into the air, or chemicals coming from airplanes that change and modify our weather. So one of the things that I'm concerned about and that we need to address in the future is how these programs are impacting microclimates needed for our crops to survive and needed for pollination. Um, if we change the growing season, the pollinators may not survive and also our crops, our flowers and our tree crops may not get the pollination needed. So one of my areas is looking at this situation to see if we can begin to put under control experimental and other types of weather modification programs. The other issue is that a lot of times we're talking about mitigation for climate change. It's rather an undefined term at this period of time. And so what happens is that many times we're talking about artificially putting chemicals like sulfur or particulates into the atmosphere in what they call geoengineering schemes to reduce um, and, and help the planet, supposedly, but help the planet to not go through such a tremendous global climate change and to mitigate global warming. However, the incidence of putting chemicals into our atmosphere is going to change and impact agricultural crop production. And if you take and you put up into our skies chemicals to reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the earth, you are going to begin to reduce crop production. Studies at the University of Illinois on corn crop production show reductions. Without the process of photosynthesis, whereby plants from direct sunlight gain the energy to grow, to produce crops, we are going to find ourselves, if we mitigate in that direction, impacting the crop production, not only here in the United States, but worldwide. One of the things that is impacting crop production right now in the United States and reducing photosynthesis, and also impacting the ability of um, solar power panels to generate the type of uh, 
of power that they should is persistent jet contrails. NASA talks about persistent jet contrails as exacerbating global warming because they trap warmth in the atmosphere when they produce cirrus and man-made clouds. NASA also talks about that when we, that these aircraft leaving persistent contrails are changing our climate. And when they change our climate to the degree that one jet can leave a persistent jet contrail which will spread across our skies from what this picture up here on my left on the screen looks like, which is a trail left by a jet, that trail can expand to 4,000 kilometers and last for 20 hours. This was unheard of in the early 60s and the 70s, and it wasn't until the late 1980s that there was a change and we started to have persistent jet contrails that persist. NASA studies show that part of our global warming problem could be attributed to these types of contrails and the jets that leave them. So one of the issues as we go through is how do you like your skies, natural or man-made? And right now, we are making man-made clouds, and this is trapping warmth in our atmosphere. The climate change that is produced by these jets, not all jets, mostly some non-commercial, but what happens to our skies is that we start to see the changes. The man-made clouds do trap the warmth and they increase the humidity. This allows for pests to proliferate, diseases, molds, mildews, funguses, and viruses. This is a man-made cloud, ladies and gentlemen, and these pictures I took myself over Northern California, and this is a burst. Uh, this is where a jet left a hot, huge plume, and then this turned in at the end of it to a burst, and this is not uh, normal, never seen before in our county historically, and I was born and raised there. This is another picture showing the jet trail just before the burst. This is our skies, and I want you to know that what you're seeing now, a lot of times, many scientists know, especially at NASA and in other areas, that the skies that we're seeing are not normal cloud formations. These are man-made. And what happens as we reduce the amount of sunlight in a form of global dimming, we reduce the solar power with these type of clouds, and we reduce photosynthesis, which is going to impact agriculture. The pictures look odd. The formations don't look like normal clouds that people have seen before historically. Uh, this is another type of man-made cloud. And what we have done and what you're seeing here is we have the photographs from the times that the jet leaves the first trail as a thin spindly trail to where they form into these different types of cloud formations. All of you can start looking up and seeing this. What happens is that there are experiments, and there's a color, you can see some color in this photograph. And part of what we're doing also is we're sending up canisters. The United States government, NASA, the US Air Force, is sending up canisters into the atmosphere filled with chemicals to modify and experiment with our, 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 our ionosphere. And when we modify and experiment with our ionosphere up here, we create experiments which they can see through these persistent jet contrails as they stay in the sky for long periods of time, and they can watch the experiments. The type of chemicals they are using are aluminum, barium, strontium, and these canisters are sent up on rockets, and what they do is they superheat the canisters to create experiments in our atmosphere. The experiments can give you colorful auroras, which they talk about as being wonderful. Many times, people think that the auroras in, in Alaska and, and the ones we see are normal, but there's beginning to be more and more seen across the United States and elsewhere where um, aluminum, trimethyl aluminum experiments to make clouds are beginning to impact us. The reason I am concerned for agriculture is that none of these experiments have any public oversight nor agricultural oversight. Our drinking water is impacted because the chemicals are now beginning to show up 
in our drinking water. In California, the State Department of Health drinking water tests were examined between 1970 and this year. And we found unusual spiking in barium, aluminum, strontium, magnesium, calcium, manganese. And all of these spiked at the same time in various drinking water supplies across the state of California and also in Arizona. So what's happening with these atmospheric tests is that aluminum, as one example, gets into, with increased pollution and acid rain, gets into the root systems of our crop trees and our trees, and it looks like the trees are dying of drought, but they're not. What happens is that the root systems can no longer absorb the water and the nutrients needed to survive. Many of our forests in Redding, California and other areas are dying. The oak trees, the redwood trees, the Douglas fir across the United States, many areas. We believe that these trees are impacted because they cannot absorb enough water because aluminum is going into their root systems. Also molds, mildew and fungus from warmer temperatures produced by persistent jet contrails are also allowing pests and molds to proliferate, also impacting tree health and crop health. The skies that you see up here, it is important to note, um, have a white haze to them. When crossing the United States two days ago, we saw this man-made produced haze all the way across the United States. There were a few real clouds. We saw the persistent jet contrails from the jet windows and the skies in the white haze looked a lot like this. So one of the things that we need to really look at is that jet fuel emissions contaminate our air, much as automobile exhaust. They know from scientific studies back in the, study, in the 1970s that uh, they deplete beneficial ozone in the atmosphere by releasing nitric acid. So one of the things that we need to look at is the impact of just jet fuel and just the emissions from jets as well. I want to go on and talk briefly about a couple of issues here that I think are important for everyone to realize. If we don't look at the problems that we are creating, the atmospheric testing programs, the jet, in other words, the jet contrails that are warming our climate, and we say to ourselves, we want to geoengineer something else. We want to add more particulates to help global warming or to stop t climate change. What we're going to have is we're going to have a pea soup up there of chemicals which are going to be detrimental to our health. It is much better to take the EPA model of the 1970s where the Environmental Protection Agency was designed to put in regulations to reduce the pollution at its source to reduce and put caps on how much pollution corporations, cars, automobiles were putting into the atmosphere. One of the things that we're talking about as mitigation is to go into geoengineering plans which add more chemicals to our atmosphere, which are going to get into our drinking water supplies, which are going to get into our soils, which are going to impact our trees. Our trees across the United States, many of them, in many areas, especially Mendocino, Lake, and Sonoma County, are dying. They are not healthy as they used to be. And this problem, having traveled across the United States into some other areas, seeing the pictures coming in from across the, the United States and, the, pardon me, and other countries, we're finding that there's beginning to be an impact from all of these programs and all the chemicals in our skies. And so one of the things we need to think about and work for is reducing pollution. Alan Buck from, Buckman from uh, the California State Department in Fish and Game talked about microbes and they're important to the environment. We have at our disposal already some technologies and already the wherewithal to begin to make the planet more healthy and to put it into a different perspective. But if we go to the geoengineering schemes that are waiting in the wings, thousands of them, to put the particulates up and sulfur, then we are going to be in trouble with agriculture across the United States and around the world. It is time that we look at some different solutions that are already here 
and it's time that we look at what's happening in our skies and say we don't need to add any more chemicals, we are doing enough. And what these experiments in our skies are doing with atmospheric heating and testing, we don't know, but the chemicals are showing up in our drinking water. So in closing, I would like to say to all of you and to encourage you to know that just what I showed you today is beginning to impact crop production in the United States. And we're seeing higher UV radiation that is burning the tips of our trees and our plants. We see the molds and mildews growing here. And we see all of this. And we hope that all of you will consider before you think of mitigation and just go forward with some of the plans that are, that are being sold to you as almost a cap and trade situation where a corporation like Plankto's decides to put iron dust into the Galapagos Islands area. This is a proposal, may have already started, and to create algae blooms. And yes, they're saying, yes, we're going to help the environment because we're going to create these algae blooms with, for more oxygen. But what happens is it's going to impact the marine life in those areas. As a geoengineering plan, it is going to be sold. The credits for this, the, the supposed benefits, is to be sold to, as credits to people who want to pollute more. And here is the, here is the really awful twist to this, in my opinion, is if we sell pollution credits to polluters to ask them so that they can pollute more, we're only going to add more to our climate change and to our global warming processes. We have to say, no, we don't want money market schemes that are going to go into the ocean and change something, possibly to the detriment of our oceans or our air, in order to sell credits to someone who wants to pollute more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a consideration for all of you when you start to talk about caps and trades, when you start to talk about geoengineering plans because we don't need a money market scheme. We need to have and use the microbes available to us, the science available to us to reduce the pollution that we're putting into the atmosphere, and we need a new direction, and I think that this might be a good one. So I hope that all of you will consider what I have to say today, and I want to thank you once again for um, listening to what I had to say. Thank you. We shall propose further cooperative efforts between all the nations in weather prediction and eventually in weather control.